Welcome back. It's a Tuesday morning on your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on S3. Now, the 1st of December marked World AIDS Day with the theme of uh, this year being Equalize and Integrate to End AIDS, reflecting the gravity of the uh, epidemic's impact on marginalized communities. Now, in 2021, there were 7.9 million people in South Africa living with HIV and AIDS, while only 5.4 million were on treatment. And here to chat more about the disease is Kribela Dandala, the executive director of One to One Africa, as well as Matthew Johannes and Linda Kajoka, uh, who are contributors to the book In My Life, Stories from Young AIDS Activists. A very good morning to all of you. Hi. Thank you. Bright and early? Yes. <laughs> are we all awake and ready to tackle this topic? Let's go. A very important one indeed, as we were just discussing off camera during the ad break. But perhaps let me start off first with you, Kribela, uh, for you to tell us more about One to One Africa, uh, exactly what the organization is and what it does. So One to One Africa is an organization that works in rural Eastern Cape. We call them in last mile communities where no one else can reach. Right, right. And we, our reason for existence is to improve maternal and child health in communities where there's a high HIV burden. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, Matthew, you come into the, the conversation with that book that you're holding on yeah. your lap over there. It's called In My in Life. My Life. Um, and, I'm, and I'm assuming one that you hold with, with quite some pride as a contributor to the project. Definitely, definitely. Tell me about the book, what it's about and how you became involved. Um, the book uh, tracks um, the stories and life experiences of a group of young um, activists mm. from high school up until now we're in our late 30s. <laughs> <laughs> but it's over 20 years um, and it tracks uh, our, uh, our personal journey yes. with our activism in HIV AIDS, how it has affected us, um, what we have, have done, and what, brings it, uh, what makes this book so um, good to, uh, to be published yes. is um, that it is almost like a roadmap to see for, mm. for somebody else that, uh, that wants to get into good to good youth activism, mm -hmm. to get, get a feel for how, how, how is the everyday life, um, right. their experiences yes. or something that they can to draw upon. I like that, that, that notion mm. of a roadmap because yeah. I think all too often, as we will discuss later on, that not enough currently is being done to create mm. the conversation and the awareness around HIV and AIDS. And so to have a resource like that is, is completely important. And Linda, I wonder to you, how important it is to, to share these stories contained within the book. I believe it's very important to share, especially sp personal stories. Yes. Uh, because there's a lot of information that is out there and it's all statistics mm. and it's just um, blank information. But with these, there are personal stories of individuals that you can relate to. Mm. So I think it's quite relatable for someone who is going through um, a situation right now where HIV is involved, whether they're infected or affected, mm -hmm. um, to get to read a book like this um, of personal stories of people who have been where they are right now. So I think this book is very relevant from that time that we were teenagers. So it's relevant to a teenager, also to a person in their 30s who may be going through um, HIV-related incident or, or, or situation right now. Mm. So personal stories, I think they're very relatable. And that is what we should be telling more, yes. to, to bring people out um, to, to a level of, of them being comfortable and feeling like they're not alone in their yeah. situation. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And that's how we end up reaching out to those perhaps mm -hmm. those last mile communities exactly. because we mm. tell human stories Absolutely. that ac actually connect us at the end of the day. And I wonder, Kabila, if you could reflect on some of the, the toughest challenges facing those last mile communities. I'm, I'm assuming number one would be access yes. to information, mm. yes. to health care. Correct. What have been some of the findings? No, I think you're spot on. Um, the first is absolutely access to um, actual services, but mm. then also to information. Very quickly, our methodology is we go in, we recruit local women who themselves are HIV positive. Mm -hmm. And all that they are is information carriers. They take knowledge into every single household that mm. we serve. We work in 35 communities, 35 villages. So every single household, they will go in. And the first thing they say is, I am whoever I am, and I am living with HIV. So they, becoming, they become walking, talking posters, first mm -hmm. of all. They are mothers, so they know the challenges that a lot of these women are facing. And then by the time that they are disseminating information, then people are actually willing to listen. The second problem is information, mm -hmm. knowledge, basic information. 
Go and get your internet, go to your antenatal classes. Right. Know your HIV status when you are a pregnant woman so that you can protect your child. So that despite your status, you can still have a, a child born free of HIV. Now, in urban areas, we really do know this, but not so much in those last mile mm. communities because mm. where are they supposed to get this information? Mm. Yeah. So we find that lack of access, lack of information are without a doubt the biggest hindrances and challenges that those communities face. Mm. I wonder um, if you might reflect on your own personal journey, yeah. Matthew, about what were some of the, the biggest challenges you faced in your own personal journey? Over the years, um, it was uh, the stigma around uh, um, the HIV AIDS right. because it's something that it is always just uh, seen on pamphlets right. or things. Mm. But you wouldn't actually pick up one because if you, if you pick up one or you get associated, then you are then um, infected. And wow. then that is, is almost like a stain. I, could, mm. I went through high school. Uh, everyone uh, thinking that I was HIV positive because I was always uh, um, talking uh, about uh, AIDS and yes. mm. showing people how to, to put in condoms. Uh, um, mm -hmm. and, and right through, uh, through high school, um, I think that is that, that stigma mm -hmm. that goes around that. Mm -hmm. is, it was the biggest, the biggest uh, thing. And getting them to talk about when, when do you actually tell, um, discuss with your partner, okay, um, about condoms. Mm -hmm. Is it on the first date? Is it just before? Mm. Is it once the lights are off? <laughs> <laughs> you, say, you know, you put it that way, it brings a smile to us. I'm sure South Africa is having a laugh right now, but it's, it's actually true. I mean, yes. We need to have these conversations because it is a part of our community, our society, a reality that we're facing, that Absolutely. we have been facing for a number of yeah. years. And it's about time that we got comfortable speaking about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And uh, perhaps this is a catalyst for that kind of conversation, not just today, not just in December of 2022, mm -hmm. but for a very long time to come yes. until we get to a place where we have an educated and well-informed enough society yes. so we can start pushing back against yes. this epidemic. Yes. And perhaps you'd like to weigh in on the conversation by sending us your voice notes on 063-408-8863. Of course, you're also welcome to comment on the Facebook post. We would love to hear from you. We'll continue our discussion with our panel shortly. It's my feel good Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on S3. Thanks for joining us at the start of a brand new day as we continue our discussion regarding the awareness and education in South Africa around the issue of HIV and AIDS. Now, did you know that South Africa has the highest number of infections and fatalities on the African continent in the last year or so? Now, Kribe Lord Dandala, the Executive Director of One to One Africa, as well as Matthew Johannes and Lindeka Joka, who are contributors to the book In My Life, stories from young AIDS activists are still with us this morning to continue our discussion around World AIDS Day, which of course was commemorated on the 1st of December. Now, we also have a uh, social media comment because of course on our Facebook page, we've asked you to weigh in on the topic and have a look at this comment here from Kim Dellis, who says, I believe that there was a big push to teach people about HIV when it was first diagnosed, when we first discovered it. However, lately we have, put, we have not put as much effort into reminding people about it. We need to put more effort into remembering one December as World AIDS Day. And not only to remind people what it is about, but also to remember those who fought and who have lost their lives in the past. Thank you very much for that, Kim. And we were, we were talking just now, perhaps on a, on a bit of a light-hearted note, that you know, on the 1st of December, you could have looked across social media and there were more videos and yeah. memes about, ha-ha, hello, December, mm -hmm. than there was about mm -hmm. it being World AIDS Day. Day. Absolutely. Have we forgotten? Seemingly, it's not all that fun a topic to talk about. So I Perhaps. Think, I don't think that we've forgotten. I think people think by now we know. Mm -hmm. But what we are failing to recognize is that those, the, 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 the population with the highest um, infection rate are younger people. Mm -hmm. So before in our time, when we were their age, there was a lot of information. This is mm -hmm. true. But the problem with the fatigue is that we are forgetting that there are a lot of young people who are coming up who need as much knowledge 
and just in your face as it was um, for us. Remember, we are a young population. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. majority of our population is young. So we dare not assume that that which was taught when many of them were still crawling, they have now somehow assimilated and said, and tell ourselves, oh, they talk about it at school. Um, surely they know. Surely they don't know. Mm. At school, they talk about it again as a biomedic condition. Mm. HIV today is transmitted more often than not through social settings. It's a social issue. <laughs> what are the social determinants? What are the contexts in which people are acquiring HIV? We need to start look, looking at that and start speaking loudly and clearly and in an ongoing manner to those social determinants and not just say ABC, abstain, be faithful, condomize. We're not saying they're not relevant, right. but there's more. There's mm. More letters to the alphabet. <laughs> this is very true. And I, I do wonder as well, I mean, the fact that the Treatment, treatment Action Campaign has said that about 60,000 young people are getting exposed to HIV AIDS annually in South Africa. Exactly. Do you think that the ele there's, a, there's an element of, of complacency, um, Johannes, when it comes to the awareness? I mean, as I think, we continue I can, just I uncovering this. just uh, echo a sentiment as well, is that um, it's a, the information is there yeah. and uh, people are just not sharing and not not sharing personal uh, um, uh, things. It's always just uh, statistics. It's it's not spread amongst these uh, um, the, the the communities and the the social groups that are affected. And then that uh, because there's not a face to 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 the um, pandemic, uh, the communication. Just, just simply breaks isn't down. there. Just simply isn't there. Uh, Linda, do you, do you think that there's still a stigma? I mean, we were talking earlier on about how people are even afraid to speak about it, or maybe mm. even pick up a pamphlet mm. that has mm. that red ribbon on it because it's like, if I touch it, am mm. I affected? Am I infected? Is there still that stigma where people are, you know, the conversation, let alone mm. just engagement? Yes, unfortunately, yes. There is still a huge stigma attached um, to HIV, which makes people reluctant to actually go and test. Because um, mm. it's all good and well when you're talking about it, um, when you're referring to it and all, but you come, it comes now to you, to your doorstep. You come and, and need to go case tested. And then um, you yourself first are afraid. You're not afraid actually of the actual test, but what, what of the outcome? How will you be now perceived? Um, what if it's positive? And also, look at the, the, the young mother going to, um, say she's going for pregnancy booking, and then she comes back and says she's HIV positive. Who does she tell? How is she met mm. by the, the family? How is she met by the partner? Um, she's now bringing the home. Yeah. So definitely there is still We're going to bring you a microphone right now, because I think we're having a bit of a technical yeah. issue with yours, but we'll come back to you. Okay. I want to just maybe touch on, you know, this... And I remember having this conversation among my friends at some point that, you know, even going to a clinic mm. and the idea of being tested, yes. mm. number one, walking into it, knowing what you're going to be doing. Yeah. So you're heading to that corner where the professionals are there yeah. and the stairs, mm. the askisness, kikobako tester. And then, mm, mm, mm. wow, we have a one. We have a bond. Mm. Exactly. That that is that still happening? Oh, in 2022. Hundred percent. So how do we change that? I mean, I mean, you know, we, we, we love our professionals, but you know, sure, they are tasked with a very. It's it's a huge task, right? It but is. They are there to protect us. Yes. We talk about the young generation. They are there to protect the future, essentially, of our country. Yes. And it starts in in places like that where you feel safe enough to go, Mama. Uh, I need to get tested. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm scared. Yeah. Talk to me. Sit me down like an aunt, like Umama. Yes. Talk to me through this and, and, and or talk me through this and help me understand my life. Why, why is that not happening? That's a great question. Why is that not happening? Because mandate, government mandate says that every clinic should have a youth-friendly space. Right. And that would go a long way towards addressing this. But the reality is the communities that we serve, they barely have a clinic. Let's just start okay. at basics. Right. So the idea of a youth space in a clinic that's barely existent, that becomes an issue. But that should not be a good enough reason. Right. The question becomes, where are the young people? There should be a deliberate effort where we meet young people where they are and in the spaces that they occupy. 
Perhaps let's put a pin location on that to be revisited very shortly. Of course, we encourage your feedback as well. We would love to know. And perhaps you are in these communities um, where you're watching and you realize that you relate to these stories that we're talking about. What do you think should be done to change the conversation among young people in South Africa? Give us a voice note, 63 And of course, also engage with us on Facebook. We've got a post there that you can comment on. We would love to hear from you. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. It is your feel-good breakfast show, Expresso on S3. We're wrapping up our discussion on World, on World AIDS Day with uh, Kriberlo Dandala, the Executive Director of One to One Africa, as well as Matthew Johannes and Linda Gajoka, who are contributors to the book called In My Life, Stories from Young AIDS Activists, who are joining us for one last segment. Uh, we do have a voice note from Miller. Let's have a listen. Good morning to you. Good morning, guys. My name is Mila Longwa. I do not think there is enough education awareness in SA about HIV because almost every time when I'm at the clinic, I always hear people fussing about taking the HIV test because they think the nurses are going to tamper with their blood so that they can be diagnosed with HIV. They mm. still fear and they still live under the stigma of HIV. Wow. Thank you very much for that insight, Mila. I didn't even consider that, mm. that people are not just, uh, you know, perhaps nervous or anxious about the, the stigma that surrounds it. it, but it's like, can I trust the person who's administering oh, this test? Absolutely. Right? That, that's a reality, that, that's a, a reality. The fear that people face. So I guess the question now, after we've had uh, this discussion, is where to from here, Kubela, if you could paint a picture? I would say, first of all, um, alluding to the conversation we had off air, we need to, we, and I'm looking at us now, before looking at anybody else. Right. We need to become the educators that we want everybody else to be. Hmm. So I think it's important that look at where you are, look at the position that you hold and the influence that you have. And in those spaces, start being the voice that creates a new narrative. Hmm. Start taking the steps that you want others to take. Hmm. So you're a minister, you are a parent, you are an aunt. Whatever your position, whether it's in life, in the community, in your family, start becoming that voice that creates that new conversation that normalizes conversations about sex, that normalizes conversations about knowing your HIV status, that normalizes all of this mm, mm, without mm. shame and without judgment. Mm -hmm. So I would say, the way forward, first of all, and the easiest for every single one of us is start to be that voice of change. If you are scared, imagine what young people are feeling. Mm. So be that voice, be that change. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, we can say directly, we were speaking about it passionately <laughs> during the ad break, that perhaps, you know, in a position of leadership, uh, of, of a religious leader, perhaps, in, in, a, in a community, you have a voice, you have a captive audience, you have people who are listening to every single word you utter. So perhaps an opportunity for you to say, hey, let me be the one who Correct. is the community leader who will take the young people, you know, Correct. all 20 of them or how many, ever many of them, to the, the, the clinic. And let's have a, a link and a connection with the local health care givers so that the smooth or the journey from, from a lack of knowledge to an abundance of knowledge is, is made smooth, right? And in that way, you take people under your wing. You, you make them feel protected so that we can get, thing, get rid of things like this stigma and this mm. attitude that I can't speak to somebody who's mm. HIV positive. I can't touch something that has a red ribbon on it because we're in 2022. We need to protect the future of our country and it starts with these real conversations that we need to have. Yeah. Uh, what would you say, Matthew, to somebody out there, uh, especially young people who are struggling and living with HIV AIDS? I want to remind them that um, they are experts at being themselves. Nobody else knows their life better than them. Mm. So when you are speaking about uh, how uh, HIV AIDS is affecting you, nobody else can tell you you're wrong about that. So in your circle, you the expert, we can uh, have other people help you with the things that you don't, you're not sure of. Remember, take that, uh, take that power mm. in whichever um, mm. niche of, of the society you are. You are expert at being a 16-year-old um, cisgendered male yeah. or a 60-year-old a, a transgendered um, female. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Absolutely. And I think, just to take it a bit further, Lindegger, to you, as an activist, mm. There are young people out there who are at the, at the position where 
they do have influence and perhaps an opportunity to use that influence for the good. What would you say to them about taking up that baton? Uh, it is quite a, a responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I would say that they are, they are having the power right now because they, the infection rate is so high among young people. So we, the young people, are the ones who, who are to take the message to the other young people. You are in a position of power. If there is a lack of service delivery at your local clinic mm. where you go as a young person and you don't get the help that you want, there are voices, you have a voice to stand up and talk. Go to the clinic manager, go to go to social media because you, it is your right to go. get Correct. your... your I mean, how is it that the person who does go and access the, the, the clinic like they should is the one who is stigmatized? Mm -hmm. How are you the one who knows where to get help, but when you get to the clinic, you don't get what you're looking for? Mm. So you have the power to change that. Do something. Make it better for the people who are coming after you. Yeah. You have the power to change it. Yeah, I think we, we all, you know, th there is that moment where there's that nagging, there's mm. that tugging at your heartstrings, at your mind, that I'm supposed to be doing something mm. with this mm. knowledge base, with this influence that mm. I have. Mm. And it's, it's, it's so, so important that you answer that call mm. to yourself Definitely. and then be able to be someone of value to the community. Mm. We, we do live in communities where we believe in the principle of Ubuntu. Mm. It takes a village. Mm. And for the protection of the future of our country, we must engage on this level. And to that extent, the book, where is it available? How can people get their hands on it, read those stories, and perhaps gain some inspiration and courage from them? Yeah. Uh, the book is available online. Uh, its uh, publisher is Jakanda Media. So. Yeah. Fantastic. Wonderful things. And then finally, if people would like to get a hold of One to One Africa, uh, Kribello, how do they do so? We are on social media, Love. finally. And our handle is One to One, O-N-E-T-O-O-N-E, -E, One to One Africa. Yes. Or they can go to our website, www.one2oneafrica.org, or they can just um, email us, yeah. info at one to one Africa .org. Yeah. Well, thank you so, so much all three of you for firstly waking up super early this morning <laughs> we really do appreciate it very much and for the wonderful message that you are carrying the responsibility that yeah. you've taken on your shoulders to come and have this discussion with us we really do appreciate it thank you and of course thanks to you as well for all your contributions please continue to engage with us on social media we still do have that post coming up where we ask you about do you think that there's enough in terms of education and awareness around HIV and AIDS in South Africa.